all right hello everyone and peace of the lord to all of you i hope my voice coming good and clear please invite your friends and today as you see our topic is about trucker carson how many times you heard me saying the day you see the muhammadan or those who support islam and hamas praising someone of you that is the point you know that this person is a fraud there's no way those people will support you if you are doing good to America because those people don't want anything good to America we do not need to be genius to know that Qatar support Hamas Emirates supported them for a long time. Maybe now they don't know more because they found out that Hamas, they want to take over Emirat. But they armed them in Syria. They gave them weapons in Syria. They promoted them. They gave them visas and they gave them shelter for a long time. And you know, we have a problem in this country, in USA, <clears throat> that we have a bunch of kids all what you see in the screen here is a bunch of kids, but people like them. You know, when I say kids, I speak about people who they are immature. Like the one in the right, they want to make him president. Can you believe it? The guy is not even 30 years old. The one in the middle, he worked for Fox News, which is the, the biggest fraud news station like CNN most of his life in fact he worked even for the government station which is the first thing I saw when I opened it first time they were teaching you how to put two fingers I like I just came to America I didn't know what this station is I have no idea what the station is about it was afternoon I got the TV I turned the TV there was a woman she was talking about putting two fingers in the anus I was saying why what what uh, Maybe she's a doctor or something, you know. <clears throat> this is the station he work in. This is who he is. The station of the liberals who teach you how to use two fingers to become a homosexual. And you don't mind. He himself don't mind to work there, you know. He work in all liberal stations and he never have a problem with them as long as they are paying him good and they made him famous. You know, you have to insert your head somewhere. Even if you insert your head in the butt of a, someone who's a liberal just to make you famous. And now he become famous, but he wanted to become more famous by opposing, not proposing. It's like going in the highway. <clears throat> If you go in the highway in the correct direction, there is hundreds of millions every day to drive in the correct direction. But nobody hear about them. Why? Because they are driving in the correct direction. But if one crazy man, he go in the opposite direction, he will become so famous, he will be in TV stations everywhere. A chase of a police for somebody driving in the opposite direction. <clears throat> But I could not believe it that this guy, he went so far and as we will make you hear yourself. This is a short video I put together myself and I posted it in Ramble, but I made it private so I can play it later. Let us watch together what the trucker Carson he said in Dubai. And you need to ask yourself, <clears throat> A very simple question. He was invited to Dubai for what reason? Dubai is a country run by dictators and you do not need to be a genius to know. Why they invited the trucker Carson? What is their interest? It's the same reason they invited and tits. Let us hear together what Carson he said from his own mouth, from his own words.
In the beginning, you will see a video <coughs> of an Arab boy. He he just uh, you know he was showering women with millions of dollars, millions, not thousands. I'm not exaggerating, millions. The floor was just covered by hundreds of dollars. He keeps spreading dollars all the time. I mean, why not? And this is why Dubai is important. You know, Dubai is just a tiny, small country. Who cares for Dubai? What is the secret about this Dubai and Qatar? I mean, why our? Uh, what is the magnetic for our politician or our journalist? What is exactly the secret? Is it like this is a China? It's a super nation? It is. Uh, how come they suddenly become involved in everything? And guess what the invitation was for? The word government. I thought you are against the word government. It turned to be he believed in one word government. And this was what was the occasion for. So let us watch together. <clears throat> the traitor. Deeply. Um, and, and it's something that I try to express. And I'm often called a traitor for saying that. It's the opposite. I say that. Why he was called a traitor? But I don't know. Let us see why. They're often I was called a traitor. Why? Let us see. Do you have an explanation? Listen carefully. This is Muhammad and Abdul. He is from Egypt, but he worked for the government of Dubai. And he always he do the propaganda business to praise the prince of uh, he's not even a prince. I mean they call him a prince royal, and uh, they praised him and etc. So now he's asking him. A very important question. And who is the one who can explain it? Drucker Carson. What is the question? Go. The nation. Till this moment. Do you have an explanation? Till this moment, since the Gaza events took place, till now, nobody came out and said, how on earth the United States of America is vetoing the, the stoppage of uh, fire, how a country would veto not to continue war, how, how, how somebody is against... I want you to look at the face of Drucker Carlson. He is shaking his head. How a country veto not to stop the war. Look like Muslims are against war. Muslims, they are they love peace. I mean, they are dying for peace, literally dying for peace. And he is asking Trucker Carson, and you will see how Trucker Carson is taking the side of Hamas, claiming that America supporting Israel is an act of evil and immorality. Listen carefully. Not to continue war. How, how, how somebody is against stopping a war. The United States is, for this moment, is the most... Did you hear the, the crowd? They were like, did you hear they got excited? Yeah, this is the question. Give him, give him. Let him screw America. Let him let him start bashing America. Uh -huh. Yeah, let us, let us use their son against their own country. Give him, give him, yeah. Powerful country in the history of the world. So if you were to frame this in terms we're all familiar with, which are the most basic terms, the terms of the family, the United States would be dad, it would be the father. Really? And the father's sacred obligation is to protect his family and to restore peace within his walls. So if I come home, I have four children, if I come home from work and two of my kids are fighting, what's the first thing I do? Even before I assess why they're fighting, before I gather the facts and know what's happening. I, I stop the fight. I stop fighting. Yes. So if I come home and I have two kids fighting and I say, go, go, beat the crap out of them. I am evil because I have violated the most basic duty of fatherhood, which is to bring peace, because I have the power. I'm the only one who can bring peace. Look at this son of Muta. This man is not a man, he is a whore. Suddenly, there is a thousands of videos of him against USA police in the world. Am I lying? Just search for it right now. So this guy, every day he speak about why we have to police the world, why America have to police the world, why we have to be police everybody, what's our business, what our business with Ukraine, what our business there, what our, and suddenly now, suddenly, 
our job according to him just because he want to be hypocrite to the to the muslims suddenly our job is to police the world and if you are america then you have to police the world you are the father of everybody but this is the same guy he keep talking about police in the universe what's our business but now he is in the middle east and the guy next to him is a muslim and all the crowd are Muslims, and the one who invite him are Muslims, and this is the country is very rich, and he want to be there, and he like it very much. So what I should do? I should blame the American and the Jews. And look what he said. There's two brothers are fighting. Is it this is what's happening? And can the American, really, do the American have authority over Hamas or over those Muslims? Like if Joe Biden, he called Hamas, says, hey, stop fighting, they will stop. What this guy is talking about? I mean, is this guy a mature man or he is just a scumbag idiot with big mouth? He is there. Do you think the Muslims, when they ask him the question, they do not know the answer? They do not know what he will say? No, they know him because they study him. They study him very well. He's, he's, he's anti-Jews, obviously. He's anti-Israel. He's anti-Christians. He supports dictators. And he is sick. And he's a traitor. And actually, he said, Often I've been called a traitor. He is. So now he said that because we did not stop the fight, which we cannot even stop, like how American they can even force Israel to stop. And why you want to force Israel to stop? Those people, they have their kids still and they're now missing. Until now, they have more than 130 and more than 50 or 60 are killed from the hostages. And this coward is saying that the one who support, like we should tell them to stop. And right away, actually Hamas, they wish. Do you know, we know why. Because now they went, they killed, they raped, they did what they want. And now they come back home. And then we say to the Israeli, you cannot kill them. You know, like in the Middle East, this is what the Muslim they do when there is a fight. Let us say you are fighting with somebody and there is five guys who they are friend for the other person. What they do? The five guys, they will start pushing you because supposedly they are trying to separate you from him. They are just doing the good job. But they will put their hands over your hands so you will not be able to beat back. But listen, they are not involved. They are just pushing you back to stop the fight. But in reality, they put, your, they put their hands on you. So the other guy could beat in you, and you cannot because they are holding your hands. They keep saying to you, come on, man, stop the fight, man, stop the fight, and they are holding your hands. So this is what Drucker Carlson want to do. He, he wants us to be those scumbags who put our hands on the hands of the Israeli, so Hamas and the Muslim, they can beat the hell of them, kill them, rape them, torture them, and the Israeli cannot fight back. And he said it clearly that if I support such a fight, I am evil. We we'll ask uh, Imarat. <laughs> okay, did you ask Imarat why they go to war in Yemen? Before you asked him about Israel, as long as you are against any fight. Did you ask Imarat why just a week ago they lost three of their soldiers? Where in Africa? What they are doing in Somalia? Why they have a base in Somalia? Listen carefully. I will play it again. And I want you to use your brain. I, I, don't make me think for you. This is not my job. I'm here just to say my opinion. But you should think. Why the Muslim, they ask him such a question? 
I mean, who is he? Is he a foreign minister? And what was the expectation as an answer? You will notice that there is something fishy in this conversation. Do you notice that both of them, they say something even before he said it, he says, you stop the fight. Listen carefully, I will play it again for you. When Trucker Carlson, he says, when you go inside the house and you are the father, you find two of your kids fighting. What do you do? Right away, the other Abdul, he said, you stop the fight. This is what Trucker Carlson was going to say, how he knew it. How the Abdul next to him, he knew it. How he knew what he would say. Listen carefully. This moment is the most powerful country in the uh, fire, the, the stoppage of how on earth the United States of America is vetoing <coughs> the, the stoppage of uh, fire, how a country would veto not to continue war, how, how, how somebody is against stopping a war. <laughs> the United States is, for this moment, is the most powerful country in the history of the world. But this is the guy who keeps saying America is weak. America cannot fight Russia. America is collapsing. Our borders is open. Give me the tissue, I want to cry. We have no country. America is the worst. We cannot go safe in the highway. We cannot go safe in the subway. And yet America is the most powerful country. I mean, this guy, he have a billion video about how America is collapsing. I mean, who is the mentally ill here? If you focus on every word he say, you will see how much he is awkward and backward and sick. He keep talking about how America is losing ground. America, the dollar, the dollar is dying and the Indian are not stopping your dollar. The Russian, they will not use our dollar. The Chinese, they are not buying our dollar. The dollar is going down. America is dying. And now, look what he said. It turned to be all for everything he said. It was a lie. America is the most powerful country suddenly. <laughs> Which one? Is it true? Which one of those are true? The one you say every day or the one you say there? Is America is the most powerful country? I thought, hold on. I have a video here. Which one? I overwhelmingly... Uh, even those scumbags are making fun of you. The young Turk. Even those stupid people, they are making fun of your stupidity. Listen carefully here. Drucker Carson is asking a question. You know, I've got four draft age children. So if you're playing recklessly fast and loose with their lives, then I have a right to despise you. And I do. So if you're Nikki Haley who's running for president or Ben Shapiro or half the people I see on television casually mentioning the possibility of nuclear war or sending Americans to fight in the Middle East or in any way involving us in a war that has nothing to do with prosperity and peace at home. Nothing. But he just said America is the most powerful country and they have the duty to police the world. He, America is the father, but here he's saying we have nothing to do with it. We have nothing to do with it. Uh, we have an idiot, he is saying, Johnny, he is saying, CP, you support a nuclear war. Well, if nuclear war would get rid of people like you, maybe, well, why not? I mean, <laughs> you stupid idiot. Who cares about my support or not support? Those who have the key of nukes is the one who care how to do it and they can do it or not. <laughs> Me, who care? You are a stupid idiot. I don't know what your, what your mom, she gave, she, you know, she was eating before she gave birth to you. Too much hummus. This guy took, you know, he is a fear monger. He keep talking about nuclear war and nuclear war and nuclear war. But we know nobody dare to use this nuclear war. Nobody. Not because they are good people, no. But because they knew that the response will be nuclear war too. 
So he, what, what Israel fighting Hamas have to do with the nuclear war? You tell me. And when he's talking about his kids, he have four kids. Look like only his kids count. Our kids don't count. He's worried only about his four kids. If I've heard, you know, you, you are a friend of Putin. He will give you a, 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 like a, a, a basement. You are a billionaire. You can build a bunker for nukes. Not like us. And he is asking now, what is our problem? But in the video in Dubai, he is claiming that USA should involve. So if you're Nikki Haley who's running for president or Ben Shapiro or half the people I see on television casually mentioning the possibility of nuclear war or sending Americans to fight in the Middle East. Mm. Or sending American to fight in the Middle East. Uh, so when you were in Fox News and you were questioning Obama why he don't attack Syria, you were not in that time smart. Oh no, no, he said a video. He says every day I, I change. Every day I change. Like if I find myself yesterday uh, wrong, I, I correct myself today. Uh, so tomorrow he will come to us with a new agenda. If we go back to the video in Dubai. He said we should involve just to make the Muslims happy. And he called his country an evil country. War, how, how somebody is against stopping a war. The United States is, for this moment, is the most powerful country in the history of the world. So, if so why, you were worry, why you were worried about the safety of your kids? How the most powerful country in the world, yet you cannot have, you are worried about the future of your kids because you are living in the most powerful country in the world? I mean, if somebody live in the Congo, I would say those people, yeah, they are poor, the Muslims invading them, they are sending terrorists. Nigeria, I would say, yeah. Uh, you know, Somalia, I would say, yeah. Uh, you know, this guy, he just said he live in the most powerful country in the world and he is worried about the future of his kids. So where are your kids? They have a future then. If America is the most powerful country in the world, yet you don't feel safe and secure for your kids. So where you can have safety. To continue war, how, how, how somebody is again Look how he shake his head. stopping a war. The United States is, for this moment, is the most powerful country in the history of the world. So if you were to frame this in terms we're all familiar with, which are the most basic terms, the terms of the family, the United States would be dad, it would be the father. Mm -hmm. And the father's sacred obligation is to protect his family and to restore peace within his walls. Do the Muslim consider us part of their family? Do Muslims consider us part of their family? Or this guy is a mentally ill person and he's stupid? What family? Hamas is part of the family of America and they believe that we are part of their family since when? I will open my Skype because I see many big mouth in the chat, but they don't dare to call me. Is what he is saying from a person who knew what he's talking about or a dumb, stupid idiot who is making a statement laughable and it is not even a statement from a mule. Even a mule will make a better sound, a better noise. Do any Muslim nation consider us as a Christians or non-Muslims part of their family? Anyone have an answer?
So what this guy is talking about? What family? What, what family is exactly we're talking about? And who is the father and who is the son? Do, do, is that what the Muslims believe? Is the Muslims attacking Israel because they are fighting over a piece of land or they are fighting over religion? And there's a religious hatred. When this guy, he made a statement, every single Muslim who is watching this, he is dying laughing about how stupid what he said, because he knew that we are not considered as a part of any Muslim family. We are infidels. We are pigs, monkeys. As simple as that. If we go right now to the Quran, actually, you know what? Why, why Quran? We can we can go now and hear what's Muslim they say. Yeah, we can. Why we cannot? Let us see. And the second one here. Let us see here. <clears throat> when Muslims go and conquer the, the adjacent country, what do we do? We kill them all? No. The Prophet says, the first thing you do is call them to Islam. If they refuse, then tell them Allah obliged upon you to pay taxation. In return, when enemy comes and attack your country, you don't fight. <laughs> you don't fight. We Muslims protect you. Yeah. <laughs> Subhanallah for this little money. Yes. Look how nice and they you are. Enjoy sitting in your home. Look how nice they are. They come to your country. They occupy their country, and then you have to pay them. Why? Because we are protecting you. Just for little money, please. Are you sure? Thank you very much. Do you see how what, what is their dream is about? We conquer you. And then we force you to pay Jizya like a dog. And he is claiming that this is little money. And he is doing you a favor. And this stupid son of Muta, Rucker Carson, talking about what? Talking about two brothers fighting. Those people dream to conquer the world. And the only reason they are not conquering the world, I will play a video for you about it, why? But let us continue. Homes and in your country and live your life normally, but the ruling is for Sharia. See? So you do not open nightclubs, you do not uh, fornicate. You do not fornicate, you do muta, you know, you have sex with the children only, it's okay. Uh, bring Bachabazi, uh, have sex with watermelon, we are good people. But you cannot build a church, and you cannot praise the Bible, and you cannot speak in the street, and you cannot debate Muslim, and you cannot refute them, and you cannot debate them, and you cannot insult the Prophet, and you cannot say the Quran is false, and you cannot say Islam is bad. Then we will not kill you. If they refuse, then... Chick. Trucker Carson talking about what? We have to fight. And if we fight you... Then we capture you, you become our slaves, and we take your land, and you take where... Because you refuse, I give you two good options. Give me two options. In the coming 40, 50 years, when the Muslims become strong, as they're supposed to be, when Muslims go and conquer... In 50 years, when we come strong, you will see what we will do. We give you two, we give you two options. You don't take them, we kill you. Convert to Islam, you refuse. Okay, pages here. You refuse, we kill you. Two options. And we enslave you. We capture you. We take your women. We rape them. So this filthy trucker Carson, he go to the Muslim land and he claim that us supporting Israel is an evil act because our duty should be the opposite. Our duty is to side with Hamas 
and stop the fight which is going to benefit nobody except Hamas. All of us, we knew that. Who is the, who, who is the one will have the benefit of stopping the war now? Who is the one who will benefit from that? Why the Muslims, they keep talking about stopping the war, but they keep attacking Israel for the last 60 years. Not a single once of those war happened, it was made by Israel. It was the Muslims attacking Israel. They invited him there because he is a traitor. He is an anti-America, anti-Christianity, anti-Jews, anti-black people. We have we have recording of him saying very filthy language for the black African. He is an extremely filthy racist, scumbag. Yet he claimed that he is a Christian. Listen carefully, and I will let him continue saying what he want to say. In so terms of the family, the United States would be dad, would be the father. And the father's sacred obligation is... And notice now, the, the Abdul, he say what he would say. Abdul, he will say the word, he will stop the fight, which means this is a conversation happening before they go on the stage. They have, this is all scripted. Are you with me? Otherwise, how the Abdul, he, you, Abdul and Tucker Carson, they say the same word in the same time. We stop the fight. Listen carefully. Is to protect his family and to restore peace within his walls. So if I come home, I have four children, if I come home from work and two of my kids are fighting, What's the first thing I do? Even before I assess why they're fighting, before I gather the facts and know what's happening. I, I stop the fight. I stop fighting. Yes. So if I... Did you notice? Both of them, they say the same sentence in the same time. It's not like there's no gap. Which means this conversation happened already. And they are asking him questions already. They have it scripted and he got paid for it. And now he will say, because we supported Israel, we are immoral, unethical, and we are not legitimate government. Hamas is, Emirat is, Qatar is. Listen carefully. I come home and I have two kids fighting and I say, go, go, beat the crap out of them. Is that what we said to, the, to Israeli? Is that what happened really? Is that really what happened? The stupid Israeli, they gave Hamas 20 years of peace. What Hamas were doing? They were building tunnels preparing for the war. Those tunnels are not built in two weeks, not in two years, not in five years, not in 10 years. Billions of dollars. Israel did not attack, did not invade, did not go anywhere, even though every day there's a terrorist attack against the Israeli. Stabbing, car bus hijacking, bombs, you name it. 20 years the stupid Israeli did not enter. I call them stupid, by the way, because this is an act of stupidity. They knew that the enemy is preparing for them. But is this is what happened now? They are not that not only they killed and rape and bore, they burn people alive. They rape women when they are and they cut their breasts when they're alive. But not only this, they did not leave alone, they took hostages. So if you are a father and you hear, you see, he, he used the word father. If you are a father, you came home and you find that somebody he just kidnapped some of your kids, what do you do? You tell the brother, stop chasing the criminals? Or you say to your sons, go after them and get our kids back? Do you understand what I'm saying? If you enter your house, and then your wife, she just said to you, oh, the criminals just come here. 
gang. They kidnap your sons, your daughters. And then one of your kids, he want to take his gun and go after those gangs to free his brothers and sisters. What do you do you, as your father? You say to him, stop. Or you say to him, go after them. Do you see how he switched the story upside down and he made the victims a criminals and the criminals are victims? How in the world anyone will listen to this maniac? I want to know how any of you who claim to be Christian who listen and support such a faith is come back like this. When he have an interview with uh, Andrew Tits, and I, I said, there is no way this guy is a good guy. He would interview a pimp. You know, regardless of what they are talking about, I mean, this guy is a pimp, accused of rape. I mean, at least wait until you see what the court will say. You know? <laughs> Uh, why in the world I will go all the way to meet such... I mean, who is this Andrew Tate anyway? But this is telling you how low class this person is. How did the 2014 Gaza war start? Google say Israel is struck first. They are striking the terrorists who they, they, they kidnapped and they killed already. You're an idiot. They kidnap a soldier and then Netanyahu. You see, people are stupid, you know. People, they, they have ignorant. They came, they kidnap a soldier. His name is Shalit. And then the stupid Netanyahu, he released thousands of terrorists. In return of this soldier... <laughs> but listen and instead of saying well you know what let us be real if you come home and you find that uh, a bunch of savage they came they rape your daughters they kill your wife they talk you and they took the list of the rest of the kids they even took the took the dog and they went to their territory. What we should do? And instead of saying, you know what, we have to be, I mean, why you are blaming, why you are saying, how come America is voting, voting against stopping the war? How come you don't force yourself as a Muslim, call Hamas and tell them, give those people, the kids to their families? How they can stop the war? If you don't promise them, you will not attack tomorrow. But all of us, we knew that the Mohammedan, they believe that they should kill every single Jew. And when they finish the Jews, they will finish the Christians. When I was in the Middle East, or was I here? Saturday first and Sunday next. I don't know what does that mean, Saturday first. Okay, we know. I mean, what is a Friday come before it too? It turned to be Saturday first and Sunday next mean we finish the, the, the Jews first because they hate, hate them most. And then we finish the Christians. The Muslims, as we speak, they are preparing themselves to invade Europe by migration. Massive migration so they can take over. Already they are there by millions. They could not conquer Europe by war, but they will conquer Europe by migration and birth rate. Every single Muslim he dream about tomorrow taking Spain and their, their shoes. And then you go to Spain, you will find that there's a government right now in Spain support Hamas. I'm serious. The liberal government in Spain not only support Hamas, they support every single terrorist groups of Islam. Spain is arming Erdogan. Spain is teaching the Turkish how to build submarines. Spain is giving technology to Turkey to make rockets. 
This is Spain. Spain now is working very hard to kill every single Christian in Europe. Because we know what will happen when Turkey become powerful. History will repeat itself and the Ottoman will invade Europe again as before. So Trucker Carlson is not worried about what happened and what's happening. He only worry about his four kids. They live in villas and they have bodyguards. And he himself, he work in the Dubai, have many bodyguards and police cars with him. They open doors for him. He live like a king. How much, how much you make a day, Trucker Carson? What was your wages with Fox News? But he's worried about his future. And he is worried about Hamas because he wants us to stop the war against Hamas. So Hamas, they can celebrate victory because look, we killed the Jews, we raped their women, we kidnapped them, we forced them to release our terrorists and they cannot attack us back. What do you want more? This is what Rucker Carson is talking about. This is his solution. America, if it was a good country, according to him, should stop the Israeli from attacking back and freeing their citizen. Listen again. I am evil. Did you hear it? If I don't do that, I am what? I am evil. I'm fighting. Yes. So if I come home and I have two kids fighting and I say, go, go, beat the crap out of them. I am evil. Because See? I violated the most. Did you, did you hear the clap of the Mohammedan in the, in the, in the hall? They were clapping because he just called America evil. Did you hear it? The Muslim got excited. Johnny, what we do about Islam then? We will send you Johnny to fight Islam because you are the best warrior. Johnny, can you do me a favor? Don't come here again. I mean, your questions is like a diarrhea. You know, diarrhea, like somebody, he is full of poo poo and he cannot stop it. It keeps squeezing and coming out like dirty mayonnaise. So don't come here, okay? Without your parents, at least. So what we should do, Christian Prince? Christian Prince, I want the answer now, Christian Prince. What did they tell you then now, Christian Prince? So what we are talking about, the solution is we stand and we fight and we destroy the enemy. And this is what Israel is doing. What an idiot. So what the what the tell you then? Huh? What the tell you then? Huh? There's no solution with someone like you. Go wear a panty, have many colors on it, and go in the beach. Most basic duty of fatherhood, which is to bring peace, because I have the power. I'm the only one who can bring peace. I am the only one who can bring peace. Are you? Okay, what about we give the situation to Trucker Carlson to bring peace back? What this guy is talking about? Can the American bring peace? Here we go, Trump. He brought... They, they made so-called the, the, the Accord of Abraham. They are trying their best, but they hate the Jews. They hate America. They sign peace only, only because they cannot go for war. Are you serious? Yes. If they can't go for war, they will not go for peace. Let me show you. Uh, hmm. Watch.
CD from Germany says that the verse in Surah Tawbah, chapter 9, where Allah says to kill all the idol worshippers wherever you find them. This verse is speaking about a specific situation where there was a treaty, where there was a truce given by Allah to the idol worshippers for four months. Guys, hold on. Did, did you hear he said he treaty? It's no, it's not, it's false. Muhammad, he told them, you have four months and I will kill you all if you don't convert. Either you leave. This is what happened when you sign a treaty with Muhammadans. When they got strong, let me show you more, more, more videos. When they got strong, they will invade you and they will kill you. I will show you from the same idiot what he will say. Give me a second. Uh, listen carefully, here we go. Edward says, what's the ruling on defensive jihad? We know that jihad is divided into two types. Two types. Defensive and offensive. Offensive. The offensive jihad is not applicable at the moment. Uh -huh. It requires the strength and the power of the Muslim Ummah. Ah, did you hear it? Guys, did you hear it? The offensive jihad is not possible at the moment. It's not because Muslim, they want to go for peace. Did you hear it? Why they are not doing the offensive jihad? He will explain to you. The offensive jihad is not applicable at the moment. It requires the strength and the power of the Muslim Ummah. Defensive jihad is when someone attacks you. So you defend yourself. Nobody says, just stay there and let them slaughter you like sheep. No, you have to defend yourself. But there is a limit when defensive jihad is illogical in the sense that there is a hundred of us and a thousand of them. We don't have to fight. What to do? Run. But don't fight in order to get killed because this would annihilate Islam in that area. Listen to these two verses from the Quran. Mm -hmm. In chapter 8, verse 65 and verse 66. Allah says in Surah Al-Anfal, O oh Prophet, motivate the believers to fight. If there are 20 steadfast among you, they will overcome 200. Muhammad, he told them 20 can fight 200. They went to war, they've been spanked badly. They came back, they told him, what you told us, man? You told us 20 <laughs> can fight 200. What are you talking about? They beat the hell of us. So Muhammad right away, he says, now Allah just now, he found out that we have a weakness. Now, just now. This God, he do not know if Muslims have weakness or not. I mean, this is not about weakness, you stupid idiot. Who in the world can believe that one can fight 10? Who in the world believe that there's a fighter, he can fight 10? I mean, they have 20 hands. Those things you see only in Chinese movies. Especially we are talking about fighting by sword. Like if there is one have a, you know, automatic gun machine and there's 20, I can believe it, no problem. They don't have gun, he can kill them. But the stupid Muhammad, he encouraged them to go for war and kill, saying to them, don't worry, they just go, man. You know, one of you can fight 10, 20 can fight 200. They went there, they get screwed. And right away, Allah, he changed his number because he found out that he is wrong. And if there are 100 of you, they will overcome 1,000. Mm. What is the ratio? 1 to 10. So in the beginning, this was the ratio. You are 100 and there are 1,000. You cannot run away. Fight till the death. Allah says in the following ayah, now... Allah has lightened your burden 
for he knows that there is weakness. False translation, not he who he knows, for now he knew. False translation. So now Allah, he enlightened your task, for now he found that you have a weakness. So what this uh, Trakhar Karsana is talking about? How we are evil, because we do not force Israel to stop attack. You know, I want to ask this idiot. Let us say for the sake of argument, America decide to force Israel to stop attacking Hamas to get back their kids. How we would do that? How we will do that? How you can force somebody who his families are kidnapped and he want to fight back and get them back and go after the criminals who raped and killed and killed 1,400 people in, in a few hours. How we will do that? Then we have to send our soldiers to kill the Israeli. The Israeli right now, they are refusing to listen to Biden. So what Trucker Carlson is suggesting, he said, we can stop them. We are the most powerful nation. What Drucker Carlson is saying that we should go and kill the Jews. Isn't this what he's saying? Otherwise, I want him to explain how we can stop Israel from going after Hamas and the terrorists to get back their kids. I'm not going to ask why in the world even we can, what kind of a moral reasoning we have to say to somebody, they have hundreds of their children are missing. What is the moral behind it to say to them, don't go? How we can explain to them that you should not go? Oh, because you, if you attack in Gaza, the Muslim will be upset. So you, you know, you get upset, who cares? You are a Jew. There's a few millions of you. Those are more than a billion. And they have money, they have oil, and they have gas. What this man is saying? He is saying we should side with Hamas. And if the Jews, the Israeli, refuse to attack, stop attacking Hamas, we should send our army and destroy Israel. That's what he's saying. And he claimed, because we did not force Israel to stop going after Hamas, that make us evil. That made us what? Evil. Most basic duty of fatherhood, which is to bring peace, because I have the power. I'm the only one who can bring peace. And so if you see a nation with awesome power abetting war for its own sake, you have a leadership that has no moral authority, that is illegitimate. And I mean that, too. See? If you support Israel, you are not legitimate government. And you notice here, he did not say anything about Hamas. He did not even mention a word. He did not say, you know what, we have to take into consideration that uh, Israeli are fighting terrorists who did this and that and, you know, no, 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 no. He's just saying exactly what the Muslims like to hear. He knew very well who is the audience. Do you understand what does that mean? People who speak to their audience and they change their tone, depend who is listening, are only the frauds, the liars. The deceivers look at him sitting between them and he's just trying to give them an answer they will accept he did not say any truthful thing which is going to offend the audience how come he is so aggressive to speak against the jews how come he's so aggressive to speak about the liberals how come he is so aggressive to speak about uh, 
policing and weaponizing the Department of Justice, but he is in a country where the whole country is a slaves of the ruler. This filthy man should be impeach and you might laugh like isn't it not official what do you mean impeach will we as a christians you should contact your church and warn them to teach and to speak against his kind he is trying his best to make israel conquered by the Mohammedans. Because what this guy he want exactly? He want us to stop supporting Israel. And what that will do? What is the result of not supporting Israel? Playing recklessly fast and loose with their lives, then I have a right to despise you, and I do. So if you're Nikki Haley who's running for president or Ben Shapiro or half the people I see on television casually mentioning the possibility of nuclear war or sending Americans to fight in the Middle East or in any way involving us in a war that has nothing to do with prosperity and peace at home, nothing in other words to do with us Americans. Prosperity and peace at home. Oh, okay. Well, we did not go to war in Afghanistan, but they came to us. We never, we never been in Afghanistan before. I mean, who cares about Afghanistan? There's nothing there. But they came to you. So is the reason for you to be living in peace if you don't go for war? In fact, the stupid American they supported Hamas, supported Osama bin Laden. It's true. The stupid American they supported the terrorist. Did the terrorist let you live in peace? And why did it not? Because at the end of the day, you are America. You are the big Satan. Israel is a small Satan. If they finish the big Satan, well, they can finish everybody. I mean, this is the most powerful nation in the world. If we can't conquer it, who care about the rest? This is the whole idea. And now he is questioning why I want to send my children to war. First of all, which war? When the last time American they fought to defend Israel? Just give me when, when, it, when it was. I want to learn from you. What this guy is talking about? Did we send soldiers to Ukraine to fight Russia? No. Did we send soldiers to fight Hamas? No. Did we find send soldiers to fight Hezbollah? No. And if you say to me now they are guarding the Red Sea, this is not to protect Israel, this is to protect the trade. The trade, which will impact America and impact Europe. You are not protecting Israel. You are just doing a favor for yourself. In fact, the American government is the one who forced the Israeli not to respond to Al-Houthi in Yemen. The Israeli, they say, let us do it. They knew that those potatoes in the, Israel, in the American government, they are potatoes. Until now, they could not stop the Houthi from attacking ships. All the trade of Europe is coming from the Red Sea. What this guy is talking about? So now the Muslims, they will control the trade. They will control the sea because they are pirate. And now if we fight back, we are bad people, we are evil. Why I wanna risk my children? You are not risking your children, your faith has come back. Your children, they stay home, they will never join the army. And you know that. It is their children who die, not yours. 
I joined the army. You never been in the army. If this guy, he loved America so much, how much he loved America? To the point what? He never joined the USA Army. I did. Do you know why he will never join the USA Army? What is the salary in the USA Army? Huh? I remember my first paid, it was, I think, after they cut the food and the clothing. I don't know, I think I get $800, $900, something laughable. <laughs> I'm serious. They charge me even for cutting my hair. They charge me for my socks. They charge me for the sport shoes. They charge me for everything, including food. He loves America more than us. He's worried about America. His kids, they will never go to war. His kids, they are billionaires already. He's talking about his kids as if his kids are going to war. And he is the only American who love America. He's worried. You know those rich people around the world? They are the last people to worry about anything. Because when you have money, everybody will come you. Everybody. When the war started in Syria, who stayed in Syria? The poor. The one who cannot go anywhere. Those who have money. Erdogan, he gave them passport right away. Just to bring your money. If you make an investment, 250,000, 500,000, depending on your investment, we will give you a new position. So if you invest a million dollar, man, you are king here. We will give you a passport. We will make you a citizen. You are a Turkish. And this is the case everywhere. Right now, if you if you want to migrate to USA, if you put in the bank more than five or six hundred thousand dollars, they give you a visa right away. Investment visa. And then you became citizen. Same in Australia, same in Canada, same anywhere. When you have money, everybody will come you. When you are poor, everybody spit at you. What is the first question they ask you when you go and apply for a visa? How much money you have? Show us your bank statement. You will be discriminated everywhere in the world because you are poor. Why those people in the borders of USA, nobody like them? Do you know why? I know, I know. You will say there's a criminal. I agree. There's a criminal. There's gang. There's cartel. We know. I agree about that. But the mere reason they are poor. They are nobody. They will bring stress to the country because you have to feed them, you have to give them school, you have to give them shelter. This is the reality. If they are rich, if they are billionaires, man, you are welcome. If every one of them, he crossed the border and he have a big case in his back full of dollars, five stars hotels will welcome you. The hotel manager, he will go to the border to pick you up. This is why Trucker Carson, he hate them. And I'm not saying, by the way, open the borders. No, no, no. This is absolutely what I'm saying. We should close the border. We should check everybody. And we should not allow what's happening. I mean, nobody will allow to have house his house without door. Only stupid people. Only stupid people would do that. But we are just sharing with you the real reason. The real reason that people are evil and they support rich and they hate the poor. Why Trucker Carlson, he went all the way to Dubai? What is special about Dubai? They are rich. Why he don't do a conference uh, in Somalia, <laughs> in Congo? <laughs> Just a question. Why in Dubai? What's up with this Dubai? Everybody want to go to Dubai. We know why. 
sex. You know, you do not need to go to Thailand to have sex with a prostitute. The, 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 the finest place for luxury and prostitution is Dubai. Do you know what they are doing to... Uh, and by the way, uh, tomorrow I will talk about this too. I will talk about, because he was, he started praising the ruler of Dubai. He did. He did. Let me show you. Shut up, you idiot. Uh... Let me show you. He was praising Dubai. Muslim countries are safe. I will show you just a little bit, not much. What's happening in Dubai? And I will not bring you a witness who is a Christian or somebody maybe, uh, you know, don't like it. Uh, uh, yeah. No, I will bring you the witness is a Muslim. Muslim women. What happened to them when they go to Dubai? Watch. Let me turn the sound on. Ago, these Pakistani sisters were promised jobs in Dubai. They thought they were going to work in a beauty salon, but the sisters say they ended up in a brothel run by a woman named Aisha. Look, the pimp, the pimp lady, her name is Aisha. May Allah bless her. I mean, that alone is a blessing. The woman pimp, her name is what? Aisha. They told them you will go to Dubai to work in a saloon. What they do there? There were also some Pakistani girls in Dubai. Ayesha shaved the head of a girl who refused to have sex with a man, and her head was bleeding. Ayesha took pictures of her and showed us, saying, your condition will be worse than hers if you refuse. After four years, they managed to escape. But they were soon re But the trucker Carson, he said, Dubai is the safest country in the world, the nicest. <laughs> this is come back. He go from the hotel to a five stars hotel with bodyguards, and he's talking about safety and how nice it is. This is your scam back, trucker Carson. Go into country enslaving people until now. Until now, they kidnap children from their countries, from Indonesia, from poor countries, from 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 the South Asia, and they use them for uh, what? Camel race, because the the camel go faster when the one riding the camel is a very little and very small in size and very light. Trucker Carson he said that Dubai is the safest country in the world. captured and Zunero was shot three times in the leg as punishment and look even after their run do you see guys her kid do you see her uh, do you see how long the stitches do you see how long look 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 what happened to this poor woman she run now she came to Pakistan the gang they follow her the gang of Dubai Why they do that? Why they want to? Why they want to shoot her and make her unable to walk? Because simply they want to give an example for anyone who think for a second to run away as they did. Did you get the point? She went back home now. She is not in Dubai no more. They came after her to her house and they shot her and look what happened to her. So if any girl she's tried to escape those gangs like Andrew Tits. She will be afraid for her family. And not only that, they did not even pay them the money. This is what Andrew Tate was doing. He told them, I have to pay tax, I have to pay, etc. you know, 60%, 40%, and then he gave them little. In this case, he gave them nothing. Listen. Their mother is still bitter about believing the lies in the first place. 
Aisha said that if she gave us all the money, we would waste it or it would be stolen. She said she'd keep the money for my daughter's wedding, that she would buy plots for them or buy houses for them. She showed us big dreams. We trusted her. We didn't realize she was... She cared about the daughter wedding, you know, the pimp mother, you know, and the pimp, not this woman, the pimp in Dubai. And then Trucker Carson, he want to convince you that... Dubai, Muslim countries, they knew how to live. And there is peace there. And it's safe. It's safe to walk in Dubai. It's safe to walk in Moscow. He never heard of the gangs, the Russian gangs, gangs everywhere. He never heard of Russian gangs. Tomorrow we will show you some videos. I mean, what's wrong with this evil man? He's like a snake out of control. And, I, and I, not, I'm not even referring to any specific region or conflict. I mean generally. And I'm deeply offended by that. Deeply. Um, and, and it's something that I try to express, and I'm often called a traitor for saying that. It's the opposite. I say that. Do you have an explanation <laughs> till this moment, since the Gaza events took place, till now nobody came out and said how... Now listen carefully. How many people will watch my video? We know that few. And then after they post it on YouTube, etc., maybe, uh, you know, uh, let's say 10,000, 15,000, 20,000, 30,000, 50,000. But this guy, he have a lot of people who listen to him and they believe him. But this guy is nothing but a sellout. He's racist, he's evil, and what makes him more dangerous that the one who listen to him mostly they are Christians. The naive, your kids, they think, oh, this is the guy who said the truth. When the fact everything they say have nothing to do with the truth. And those people, they live in palaces and they speak about what's right, what's wrong. They speak about economy. <laughs> you know, I want to know what economy is talking about. When the last time Trucker Carson he sleep without heat in his house? When the last time? I did not I did not fix my heat because I'm trying to save some money when I get older and I have nobody no income. My heat is broken. Honest to God, my heat doesn't work. We save some money so in the future when we get old we will not be begging for money and help. We know that the stupid social security will not even be covering your, your grocery. Is that the case for Trucker Carson? He is the one who is worried about his future and the future of his kids. We got, we got sick, we don't go to the doctor because we can't afford it. And if we afford it, we are scared of how much we will pay. Is that the case for Trucker Carson? Tucker. Trucker. Who are the, those people to talk about Economy, what they knew about economy. They are the one who get rich when everybody go poor. You know, once I was sitting with a bunch of Middle Eastern, I just met them, I do not know them for long. And those hypocrites, they are Christians, not only Muslims, you know, Christians. Arab Christian, they start talking about, eh, you know, America, it's a bad America. I mean, if I am one from Jordan, the other one, you know, if I am now in Jordan, I will be like living like a king. And I could not take it no more. 
So they said to me, well, what, 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 why you are not talking? I said, I don't know, you're a bunch of idiots, all of you. As long as this America, this country is so garbage and bad, and you know, why you are so desperate to stay here? Why you don't take your passport, the original one, not the American one, and fly back to your country? Who's holding you? I don't see police around you. I mean, you can live like a king in Jordan. So why you are, what are you doing here? And this is exactly Trucker Carson. He bashed America. He claimed that every country in the world is better than America, but he will not go and live there. Why? Because in America, he make a lot of money. Hundreds of millions. Do you know those people who they are famous, how much money they make a month from their show? Trucker Carson, Ben Shapiro, all of them. This is just pure business money. And you pay them to watch them. All right. I know why people they ask me when you are going to go live. I mean, as long as you know my page, why you don't? Why you ask me? All right. All right, let us be nice and answer him. Do we have anyone who support uh, Trucker Carson who would like to call me? Oh, okay. Wow. Okay, guys, do you remember the, the person I spoke to? Uh, I, I just, I see this message from him today. But this is what was sent to me at 1 p.m. Uh, let me zoom in so we don't show. Actually, he's, he's showing a name, but anyway, nobody knows what, there's no last name. Read with me carefully. Hey, Christian friends, this is Uthman. From the other day, I just want to say I accepted Jesus Christ as my Lord and uh, Savior. My Orthodox friend mom is talking, taking me to go uh, to get baptized next week, Saturday. Uh, please pray for me. I thank Jesus for guiding me. If I come uh, on a stream and tell the people something, let me know. Okay. Well, I don't know. I don't think he is listening, but if he is, he can... Call us. Let me text him back. All right. Very nice news, and I hope his son, his family too. They will become Christians and they will be saved from the devil Muhammad. All right, I answered him back. All right, let's see another text. Okay. Okay, well, just messages. I didn't see anything important. All right. <clears throat> so listen uh, carefully. In your church, you should warn the people about this man. Because there is many Christians, they think really that he is a good Christian. First, he is racist. You can search right now for his recording saying very racist words to black people. And you know that if you are a person who he believe he is a Christian, there is no way a Christian person he will say such words for someone or people who they are just because of their color. 
We as a Christians, we will never accept that. And this is Antichrist behave. This is Antichrist behave. The Bible make it so clear, for God, he loved the world. He didn't say, for God, he loved you because you're white. For God, he loved the world. He sent his only begotten son. And we know, and it is a fact, that the first disciples, when they spread, first they went to Ethiopia and India, before they went to Europe. First they were in Syria, before they went to Europe, before they went to Rome, before they entered into Greece. So the one who try to claim to be Christian, yet he is racist, he cannot be Christian. Let us see what this gentleman he want. Hello? Yes, my friend, you are live on air. What do you like to say? Hey, so I wasn't going to call today because it didn't seem related to this topic, but someone called me Son of Muta and uh, dared me to call you. So Why they call you Son of Muta? I don't know. I, I asked the mods if I Are, are you a Muslim? Yes, I, I'm on. I'm, am I what? Are you a Muslim? I was. Oh, you were? Oh, okay. What happened? Why you left Islam? I read the Quran, and unlike most Muslims, my family isn't Islam, so it was easy for me to realize that this is all bullshit. And okay. then I found you a couple months after. All right. I, I, love, I love everything you have to say, by the way, but uh, it's, I had questions about Bitcoin. Like, I, I see a lot of these leaders promoting it, and a lot of people are even putting their life savings in it. And I've worked in the industry, and I don't know how to argue and debate about it, but I don't necessarily trust it too much. So I, I'm just, I want to know what you think. My friend, I am not that rich to speak about. I mean, I have little money. I'm trying to invest it here and there, and I hope I will not lose it. Uh, but Bitcoin is, is no coin. You know, I don't, do, do you know even where your money is? Nobody knows, right? So and if, uh, if you lose your password, you lost your money. So there's no name, there's no address, there is no name for you, and there's a, there's a username, there's a password, there's whatever numbers. And then if something happened to the server, somebody hack it, and then he transfer all your money, it's gone. How, how you can trust such a thing? I don't know. For me, I would never trust this. Uh, you know, they, they say that you, you might get rich, so rich, billionaires, I don't know. But I say that this is not a money. And there's no way to trace it and no way to find it because they can take it away. Every day we hear about a company collapsing for Bitcoins because somebody he was playing games and he took all the money, hundreds of millions of dollars. So how you can trust something you cannot... Okay, now if, if, you, if you put your money, if you spend, let us say, all your life saving there and you lost your password to enter your account, how you can go there? Yeah, that's that's the thing. I, I don't know if it. I, take it I heard of a guy. He have he own like in now in bitcoins. And the money he have is like maybe seven hundred million dollars, but he cannot log in. He lost his well, password. Yeah, that, that, that was an idiot. But but what I'm talking about is like I I just don't know what you're saying is a valid point. Like, can they just turn off Bitcoin, destroy it? Well, there is it. no there is no guarantee of such a thing. You see, who is like you see if you say to me, there is names. They own it. There's addresses. We can go there. There is a guarantee from the government. They are watching it. Uh, then I can maybe think about it. But as long as there's nobody watch, like if you put your bank up to 250000 in the bank, government, they have to pay you back, correct? Mm. Look, in the Bitcoins, who is going to give you anything? Let us say you invested 250000 because this is, the right, the, this is where the risk is free. But there is no such a thing with bitcoins. I, I'm not expert in you know in such a thing. But for me, if I have money, I will never put one penny there. Okay, thank you. Even if, if even if it's going to be a, like one coin will be a million dollar because uh, I'm just investing in the cloud. I don't know what it is. Okay, pe thank pe you. People who have too much money, maybe they can put here and there. They don't know what to do with their money, you know. But for us, you know, limited. What you have, you know, 
You lose it, you lose everything. And then you will cry forever. <laughs> right? Yeah, I'm sure. Yeah, for me, I, me and myself, actually, I like, uh, uh, I'm trying to do some saving for, uh, you know, when I get older and uh, trying to do investment. But even when you try to do investment with the stocks, there's no guarantee they can lie to you. The owner of the company, he can scam you. He can be lying. They can be spending and they don't report correctly. And data you find out. There's many things you don't know. So even in stock market, you don't know. But at least those stock market, they post there. There's a news. You hear what's happening. You can sell fast. You can, you know. But in the Bitcoins, you know, it's there is nothing there. In the top of that, uh, depend what the investment you want from. Like, do you want uh, just to have an income for the future, or do you want to get rich? What do you want? It it's more of like a like you know some people just want to have it because I, I used to work in the industry. Like I would sell people Bitcoin. I was a sales guy in in there. Hmm. Some people just want to have it just because it's something that they can hide from the government. Kind of like uh, if you were to buy anything that's a currency that you can just hide and keep to yourself and use to spend in other countries you um, know you know like once i remember i did hide my credit cards uh so if a thief come inside we'll never find him but until now i could not find him too <laughs> so <laughs> so i'm afraid if you want to hide it from the government you are choosing the correct place to the point you yourself you will not find it because if the government cannot find something that means there's something fishy about it because how in the world government cannot find it i mean do you know how much power they have do you know how much software of spying they have do you think really that government right now they don't have a name of everybody involved in bitcoins i mean that's not you know like you are you, you were working as a sales agent for bitcoins can the government hire you as their own agent to tell what? them that who, who is the one who bought from you? I mean, come on. So uh, the statement that, uh, you know, nobody knows, etc. government don't know, this is just a joke. Those people, they can listen to your phone, they can listen to your conversation, they can listen to you when you fart. I mean, who can hide from the government, especially if you live in the West or America, mm -hmm. right? So whoever says to you, you can hide it, that's, that's uh, you know, that's not true. They knew everything. Anyway, my friend, uh, uh, if you want my advice, uh, don't do it. But who am I? I'm not. And I want your thoughts. But yeah. yeah, I'm not. I don't. Think I will I'm never. Right. I will never. You know, for me, if you if you are a person who want to to uh, security, uh, buying a property, renting, or maybe a stock which is not risky, like have to do with something is exist, something is guarantee. Something people cannot live without it, you know, uh, and that something is uh, is is like can change in the wind. Like you know, if you buy stocks with Tesla, this guy Elon Musk is an idiot. Every day he says something stupid. He's like Trump. The second he says something stupid, the stocks go down. So it was two hundred something. Now it's one hundred eighty-five dollars. So people they lost almost a hundred dollars just because of his statement. So. When you invest with somebody, you have a big mouth, all your money is between his teeth. He make one statement, you lose your money. Just one statement. You know, like Elon Musk, he said, I'm going to sell shares uh, because I cannot, I don't have money to pay for uh, a Twitter. $40 billion. Stocks went down like crazy. Just one text, one message. Even though you did nothing wrong from your side. You trusted the company, you invested in the right place, those cars are going to be sold. Everybody talking about electric cars, how smart it is. One statement from an idiot can destroy your saving. Losing $100 out of 280 or something, that's a disaster for someone who have little money. Or anyone, yeah. even the one have a lot of money. Well, what, what about real materials like gold, silver, or watermelon? There's a risk too, because even those, uh, you know, I mean, who need gold these days? There's any need for gold? I mean, if, if the gold is needed I, only I in certain in certain material, like a, a certain industry. Yeah. But the major gold you talk about is a stock gold, which means gold saved in storage. Nobody will use it. Nobody will touch it. That gold, yeah. 
will 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 increase only when there is inflation and things go crazy but even that can go the opposite direction so i i believe anything that does not give you protection is not an investment so uh, you can buy a land in a in a in a you know corner lot in a city it's far away a little bit from the city after 10 years from now it's going to be a city it's going to be 10 times 20 times the price of the property will be increased that is a good the land is there nobody can take it from you you own it there is no risk you lose nothing the city is expanding population is increasing that this land is going to be important if not next year five years you know you have to invest all for the long term not for tomorrow Tomorrow investment is a risky investment. Long term is the best. And uh, a focus on something is real, not something based on fictions and uh, somebody making a comment in Twitter and you will lose all your money. And I'm happy for you, my friend, that you left Islam. Anything else? No, uh, nothing else. Not well for another time. All right. Thank you very much. Bye. Yeah, I don't Ooh. want people to think I am a, a, a finance advisor. <laughs> I'm not, you know. I am not an expert uh, in such a thing. Uh, life is, you know, uh, full of uh, uh, risk. And sometimes you have to risk in order to gain. You know, there is risk always. Like, you, you know, you have to drive in the highway to go uh, fast. You have to take an airplane to arrive, you know, in a few hours. There is risk. You know, you, you might go in the airplane, you never, never land. You know, like you land, but you land uh, in a crush, not uh, not a normal landing. So life is about risk, but there is a risk of a stupid person and there is a risk of uh, of a wise man. And all of us, we sometimes we do stupid uh, decisions in investment. And that can happen to me and happen to you. So you have to be smart. All right. So we go back to our topic and we are happy for this guy. He left Islam. And his family, they are not too much Islamic, which is good. Uh, let us see. If there is anyone who support and he is convinced with the trucker Carson defending Hamas, attacking America, attacking Israel, anyone? All countries are buying gold and silver. Well, you know, countries, there are some countries don't know what to do with the money. So they buy gold. But in, in reality, I say to you, what is the use of gold? Nothing. You see, in certain time, salt was more expensive than gold. Who buys salt these days as an investment? Nobody. So things change. Gold was the most powerful, let us say, uh, um, you know, valuable thing a human being have, for sure after diamond, but I mean, in a massive way. But now, what gold is for? Venezuela, when they, when they bankrupt, they start selling their gold to Emirat and Qatar. Did their gold save them? No. What gold did? If they invest their money in something can give a prediction, that can save the nation. If we build an industry, if we build manufacture, if we have technology, that will make money. Gold doesn't make babies. You buy a kilo, the kilo will stay a kilo after a billion years. Right? If you put one seed of tomato in the ground, this seed will give you many tomato. But if you have one gold of one one kilo of gold in the ground, it's going to stay one kilo of gold for the rest of time. It's not going to become two gold, two kilos. And when you when they say to you that the value of gold is more like now, the, let us say the gold was one thousand when you bought it. And the gold, it is 2,000 when you sold it. The fact, you did lose money. Why? Because the value of the gold, when it was 1,000, it used to buy something equal to the 2,000 today. So what you did with the gold, you won nothing. 
Now there's inflation. This is why one th the one the one kilo is equal to to two thousand, but it's still the two thousand by one kilo. I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. <coughs> Those who bury money and they uh, they want the money to multiply by itself is not going to happen. So if you want to invest, invest in a company, uh, you know they do something. They have job, they have businesses, they 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 give people jobs, salary, uh, they help the nation. You know they provide something. What Bitcoin do? What Bitcoin do? Bitcoin, as the way I see it, is for criminals, people who they are trying to hide from government, and you know you have something wrong. You think you can get away? <clears throat> All right. Do we have anyone from those who support Trucker Carson? Trucker. I call him Trucker in my video. Tucker or Trucker? I don't know. <laughs> oh boy. Anyone? So, what do you think, guys, about what I said? Are we going really to allow such a person, such a maniac, to deceive our children? Is that really what what uh, you know what we can? Is that the point we reach? That someone like this, he can say whatever he want, and always you need to remember that when the enemies, and I say the enemies, yes, those are the enemies. Emirat is not a friend nation. They are not. Those people believe in Muhammad, believe the kuffar must be killed, believe that the whole earth should be conquered. So when the enemy prays one of you, you should remember there is something wrong with this person. Otherwise, why they are praising this person? Give me a reason. If I ask you right now, who is the one who will be happy to see Tucker Carson, Tucker Carson, a president? Hamas. That's it. He will cut fund to Israel. He will not support Israel. And we attack Israel and we gang against Israel. And Israel will be alone around. And all those 1 billion, 1.5 billion, they knew now that Israel is alone. Because there is someone like Trucker Carson, he believes what's our, what's our business? But in reality, is it's our business. Why? Because if they finish with Israel, they will start with us. And same time, this guy he says, "What's our business?" But is it true that many of the hostages are American? This is a point I I did not mention. Is it true that many of the hostages? Are American so is it our business to go and free the American or it's not our business forget about the Israeli let us say this guy he don't care for Israeli he hate the Jews he hate the black people as you know we know already who is he but is it our duty as American to rescue the American who they are kidnapped by the terrorist How this guy, he claimed to be an American and he cared for American and he's worried about American kids. What about bringing the American kids home? This is why we as a Christian, we should fight such a person, expose him and not allow him to poison the mind of children. He is, this is why both they agree together, like Andrew Tits. You see, Andrew Tits is a pimp. This guy is a pimp too. He's sold to the devil. If we take the advice of a trucker Carson, and by the way, I think Trump is a stupid too, when it's come to the abroad uh, policy. 
But I wonder how come Trump, you know, Tucker did not question the motive of Trump when he was supporting Israel and he moved the embassy to Jerusalem and, you know, he gave aid. How come he don't criticize Trump and he called him names? Isn't it Trump? He said there is no president supported Israel like me. Did the Trump says that? And I stood proudly with our friend and ally, the state of Israel, and I will do it again. You heard about today, the Hamas, Hamas terrorist invasion. Trump, he do not know how to say the word Hamas. He called them Hamas. He just called Hamas Hamas Hamas. What Hamas? Okay. So, uh, yeah, well, Trump, he have a very high skills in languages. So he think Hamas is Hamas. Okay, uh, tell us about Hamas. And I will do it again. You heard about today, the Hamas, <laughs> Hamas terrorist invasion. Hamas. <laughs> I mean, when you think about, and what do you think of Hamas? What do you think? Do you know about Hamas? Uh, he was doing it on purpose. He called him Hamas. <laughs> That's a good one. The terror evasion of... I think he's copying me because I'm the one who called him Hamas. What the heck? Israeli territory and the murder of Israeli soldiers and citizens is an act of savagery that must be and will be crushed and avenged. has to be crushed. Israel's at war and the United States has to support Israel. We have to support Israel. There's been no better president for Israel than me. It's true. He was more a president of Israel, more than a president of USA. <laughs> he was busy with Israel. But here you see how this uh, Tucker Carlson, he's an idiot. And he appealed to the stupid ones. You know, like when you are a teenage, you say no just because it's, uh, you know, okay, your mom, she says something, you say no. It doesn't matter what she says, you know, you're not even listening. She say go here, you say no. You say sit, you say don't say no. You say no. no. And this is what happened when your journalists are immature and they are idiot and they are sold out and all what they care about is making money. There is no way someone here is a Christian, he will say it's not our business to support Israel. Why? Because we know why they hate them. They hate them because they hate us. This is not about land. This is not about land. When Muhammad, he says, time will come and you will kill every single Jew. At that time, there is no state of Israel as today. At that time, Israel was occupied by the Roman. Still, he want to kill them. And he was talking about the future. He killed them in his time. And he's talking now about killing every single Jew in the world. And Hamas have tons of recording. But not only Hamas, all Muslim sheikhs. If you see, if you search right now about, uh, can we be friends with the kuffar? Shall we kill the kuffar? Let us hear. Is it this is about only Israel? You know, what uh, what uh, Iran and Houthi and Hezbollah, they say every morning, death to America, death to Israel. Death to America, death to Israel. Why do they say death to uh, Russia? Because Russia is supporting them, sadly. It's the fact. Who is the one who built the nuclear facility for Iran? Russia. All the weapon of Hezbollah. And now they are exchanging support. Iran sending drones to Russia. It's not because they like the Christian there, but they are using them. They need Russia. They cannot fight the whole world alone. They need someone in their side. 
This is Hamas making a speech. And this is a video published by them. What the video is saying, let us see. And the filthy trucker Carson is accusing America to be evil for supporting Israel. When those people they are kidnapping American children, as we speak now, there's American are kidnapped. And yet the filthy trucker Carson, he said, none of our business. Did you see that interview with Sinwar friend who said Sinwar was shocked that Israel respond like this? He would have done operation differently. Well, for sure, you know, and actually the respond, the massive respond of Israel is a little respond. So it's a massive and a little. Why? Because simply uh, the mission is not complete yet. And those people, they will rebuild. This is why they have to control all of Gaza. And they have to control the border with Egypt. And actually, the response of Israel today is very important. So any... Uh, I saw the, the last uh, speech of uh, Hassan Nasrallah. And you can tell he's terrified. Because he heard that the Israeli will not stop, even if he stop. That's it, from now on. And this is the only way to speak to such an evil cult. They don't respect you, but they fear you. They don't want peace, but they will go for peace if they are not the uppermost. We just played for you the video of Sheikh Asim. He said, "Well, if you if you if the enemy is powerful and you don't you know you cannot fight, this is stupid. You don't fight them. We wait until we get strong and then we kill them." Emirat, they sign an agreement with, with Israel, not because they love Israel, but because they are afraid from the invasion of Iran. So the enemy of my enemy is a friend temporarily. All those Muslim countries who sign agreement with Israel, they will never be good to Israel because it's against Islam to be good to them. As simple as that. It's just about a matter of time. If you remember in the Quran, in case your memory is not good, we can refresh your memory. <clears throat> the Quran says, Cry not for peace. When you are the uppermost. What does that mean? It's very simple. Don't go for peace if you are the victorious. If you are not, go for peace until you become the uppermost. And this is in the Quran. This is not a fiction. This is Quran.
chapter 47, verse number 35. Cry not for peace until you are, as long as you are the uppermost. If you are not at uppermost, you sign peace temporarily. This is what Muhammad he did. Muhammad he signed peace with his enemy. The enemy they were stupid. They believed him. They went to sleep. This is what happened with Israeli until October 7. They stopped even watching Hamas leaders. They stopped watching their phones. The Shimbit, they go home. That's it. The whole nation is vacation. There is no war. That's it. Those people they are building villas. They are buying a lot of concrete to build villas. They allow the money to come in from Qatar like rain. You know, they are because, you know, those Hamas leaders are corrupt. They are building villas and swimming pool. Let them. As long as they leave us alone. They were stupid. And this is what exactly what Muslims believe. Chapter 47, verse number 35. So be not weak and ask not for peace between two brackets from the enemies of Islam. Not from somebody, anybody, the enemies of Islam. Anyone who, who is the enemy of Islam? Anyone don't accept Islam. Anyone don't accept Islam. He is the enemy of Islam. While you have in the upper hand. So, then when you go for peace, when you don't have the upper hand, you see it? If the Israeli now are a very weak nation and they don't have a very powerful army, you know what will happen to the Jews and the Israeli. You know. They will be slaughtered. In fact, they try to slaughter them many times. Each single war happened in that area against Israel. It was the Muslims attacking Israel, not the opposite. It's not the opposite. They want to make no Jew, as Muhammad he did, no Jew, no Christian in the Arabian Peninsula. Muhammad he said, if I became victorious, I will cleanse the Arabian Peninsula from the Christians and the Jews. We don't say things, we, we prove it. People make a speech, here we give reference. This is from the mouth of Muhammad. I certainly expelled the Jews and the Christians from the Arabian Peninsula as leave only Muslims. Do you see it? This is the dream of the Muslims until they conquer the whole earth. So when this is stupid trucker, Tucker Carson, he go and he uh, he's being hypocrite to the Muslims because they invited him and they are paying him money. How much money he got paid for coming to Dubai? Bodyguards waiting for him, the officials in the airport, the same is in Russia. I mean, everything, my friend, have a price. How much money Prakar Carson he made from his interview with uh, Vladimir Putin? Just ask yourself how much money? Nothing is about the truth, it's all about money. Follow the money, you can understand a lot of things happening in this earth. Those people who they are working in journalism, there is no journalism, there is vandalism. It doesn't matter of who, the conservative, so-called conservative, or so-called liberals. Both they have vandalism, not journalism. They switch the fact upside down by changing the title. This is why you as a Christian, you should not get your news from those idiots. 
you should find your news in your own way. You listen here, there, you know, try to filter. You need to filter. If you don't filter your own news, you have no news. If I go right now to watch the, what, the news about the war in Ukraine, well, there's a news agency support Ukraine. There's a news agency support Russia. How we will find out what is right, what's wrong? Simply by using your brain. Very simple method. Who is the one who invade who? Who is the one is so strong and who is the one is so weak? Is it possible that someone is so weak, he's going to invade the one who is so strong? Is it possible that the one who is bad is the one who have a small army, he have no nuke, he is nobody, they are poor, people make fun of them because they are poor, they make fun of their army because they will collapse in two days, or the one who have a massive army, he have nukes. Who is the one? Who is who is a threat to who? In the Russian media, the Ukraine are a threat. But as you see, Drucker Carson is afraid from nuke and war, and you know, etc. Russia is so powerful. America is collapsing, according to Drucker Carson, in one video. In the other video, America is the most powerful nation. Depends who is talking to who. So you have to be smart and you have to find out yourself. It's like, you know, they brought to you two people fighting. One is two foot tall and one is 10 foot tall. And the one who is 10 foot tall crying, he had tears in his eyes saying, no, he didn't beat me. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So then because the guy, he have tears, he must be the victim, right? Even though he is 10 foot tall and the other guy is just, if we can call him a guy, he's just two foot tall. And this is what they do always. They go, they kill you, and they cry. So they attack Israel, they slaughter them, they rape their women, they kidnap their kids, and then they cry for peace and they claim to be victims. Have you not recognized that uh, the NATO uh, washing money in Ukraine and they are getting into all over Europe now? Of course, Russia, Russia will act. Okay, hold on, I will go with you. I don't know, you know, sometimes, look, my brain is not functioning like yours. So as long as Russia is afraid from the NATO, how come Putin is giving an open visa to the Turkish? All his vegetables is coming from Turkey. He sold Turkey, which is a NATO country, the most advanced missile, which he refused to give to Armenia. Not only that, even the old fashioned missiles, which Armenia have, the Russian refused to let them use it in their war with Azerbaijan. Putin, he threatened that he will take it away if they use it. So look, he is so worried from the NATO, but Turkish is all over Russia. He is so afraid from the NATO, but there is almost a million Russian inside the NATO countries. I mean, do you see how much he is so worried from the NATO? The NATO is so excuse. It's just an excuse. The Turkish, they are an enemy to Russia. They have historic war with Russia. The Turkish, just a few years ago, they shut down two airplanes for the Russian and they killed the pilots. How come Putin did not respond to Turkey? I will tell you why. Well, he is a member of the NATO and they are not a small army. And Putin is a dog. Is a potato. In the case of Ukraine, the Russian always look at the Ukraine as farmers. Nobody, you know, those people they always grow chicken for us, fruit for us. They are the farmers, the one who send us bread, the one who do, you know, they are nobody. They always look down at them. It's about racism too. 
So they could not believe that the US Ukrainian, they are saying no finally to the Russian. Otherwise, the NATO is a joke. You know nobody there to attack Russia. Who there? Isn't the German, they sign an agreement for gas and they want it and the Czechoslovakia and Finland and all of them. Uh, Russia was in a honeymoon with the NATO. Why people have no brain? McDonald's open in, the, in Russia, Mercedes open in Russia, Audi open in Russia. I mean, all, all the NATO companies, they are in Russia. And Putin, he welcomed them. Why he's worrying? It is an excuse. Ukraine is a rich country with minerals. And there is a very heavy industry. Ukraine is the only country can make spaceship engines. Even NASA used to take their engine from them. So Ukraine is a very strategic for Russia. Putin, he want to steal the Ukrainian money. He want to steal their minerals. It's about conquering. And because he thought, this is why he called it operation. He did not call it war. He considered Ukraine as a part of his country. Operation, you know, like, you know, we will go to the borders and we do operation. Oh, we have a gang there. We do operation. He did not call it war because they don't accept even Ukraine to be an independent country. But the same Putin, he was signing many agreements with Ukraine before the war. As an example, the, the, the gas line. And they have embassy. And the exchange of ambassadors, which means you acknowledge them as not only that Russia signed a treaty with America that nobody will invade Ukraine. And this is why the Ukrainian they gave their weapon, their their nuke. The stupid Ukrainian they gave their nukes. And this is what happened when you trust your enemy. Never trust your enemy. Imagine if the Israeli now. They sign a treaty with American and uh, let us say Saudi Arabia that uh, uh, you, uh, you know Israel they give up their nuke and we sign a treaty that nobody will invade them. What will happen to Israel? The same what happened to Ukraine. As soon they give their weapon, bingo, they are nobody. They want to eat them alive. And if the Israeli give up their nukes, they will eat them alive too. I mean, they want to eat them alive, even though they have nukes. Somebody calling. Hello? Hello, uh, I'm calling again. All right. So my little brother, I was talking to him about Trump earlier today. And about what? He has the, about Trump. Okay. And he has some uh, arguments about Trump. He, he disagrees with you, but he was too scared to join. So I'm here instead of him. Uh, is that okay? Sure, sure. Okay. So his points are, one, strong economic policy is going to translate to geopolitics. So the better Trump does locally economically in the United States, the stronger the United States will be in the world. Uh, two, countries fear Trump, and he's kept them in line so far, and they obey him. So he thinks that he will be able to make them fall in line again. Um, and three, anyone that knows, this is his own words, anyone that knows basic of life knows that Trump is better. And he thinks that he can avoid any sort of conflict. Like he's uh, the Messiah, basically. Ah, yeah, Messiah. <laughs> Don't insult yes. the Messiah, my friend. No, you see, the uh, Trump, uh, I voted for Trump, and uh, if there is an election again, I will vote for him again because we don't have other options. Uh, for sure, he is better in the economy uh, because he, you know, he go with common sense when it comes to economy. Like you know, uh, we have gas, so why we buy gas? And when you don't buy gas, the money will stay in USA. And when the money stay in USA, uh, more jobs, more companies, more business. It's very simple, uh, you know, common sense. The the liberals are stupid; they have mental issues. So 
Trump, he follows just an easy method. Oil, fuel, cheap fuel, mean business, mean money, mean economy. And we have the fuel. So why we are, going, we are going to buy from Qatar when we have a lot of fuel? That's all. This is the whole strategic point which make him successful. Stupid Biden is the opposite. The first day he came to the office, he said, we will make the fuel and the, uh, uh, you know, like they go bankrupt. He said, we make them, he, he, I promise you, we'll make them out of business. But we are going to make them out of business. But now we are buying from the enemies. So money is going out of the country. The more you buy from abroad, the more you lose because your money is going out. The more you buy from indoor, the money stay indoor. So imagine we live in the same house and you give me tomato, I give you money, but the money is still in the house. Then you have to invest it in the house. When we give it to China or give it to Qatar or give it to Emirat or give it to Bahrain, the money is gone. That's it. And they use it. And those are countries where they are, you know, they consider themselves enemies. So it's very stupid uh, behavior of the of the liberals. Uh, the second one you said about uh, two countries, they are what? They obey him? No. So so I, me and him both agree economically he's strong uh -huh. and you do too. Um, but yeah, the second part is where I disagree with him. And I don't know if you agree or not. But I don't think you do. But uh, that Trump is able to scare off other countries, and and basically he's able. To, he, he thinks that he can prevent uh, any sort of conflict geopolitically, um, and between countries because he's he people fear him. Like Russia will fear him. Nobody, you down. see, nobody fear a person, but they fear America as a strong country. So when the economy is strong, yes. when the economy is strong, the country is capable of doing more. When the economy is bad. I mean, because war is very costly. It's not a joke. So when, if a Trump, he became a president and the economy is strong, then America is stronger. And that will make the enemy be aware of a stronger country. If the economy is bad, borders is open, you know, things is messed up, the country is very much divided, uh, jobs is going down. I mean, they knew that the American, they cannot uh, go for war and they cannot fight anybody. So they will be, you know they will they, they will compromise when you are weak you compromise so with the trump the compromise issue is not a, is not in in the table because simply why he will compromise if he is the strongest however trump is not a person of war but still the enemy will fear america which is with a strong economy which will make the man more popular and more able to convince his nation in case he decide to go for war so yes, nations will fear him more than the stupid Biden. This guy, you know, is weak, is is old, and uh, his decision is not in his hand. It's obvious. Uh, his own party make fun of him, so he is not going to scare anybody. But still, America is the most you know powerful country in in the world, and still the enemies they will be worry that even this old man who is very weak, he can go crazy and he can make a command and he can make them pay the price. So at the end of the day, it's about strong economy. It's not about a strong person only. Strong economy is more important. Uh, if you have no money for buying an emission in your pocket and you have a gun, your gun is useless. And this is exactly what economy is about for war and peace. Economy is the emission for anything. It is where all your supply coming from. It's where your security is coming from. Uh, you know, strong economy means strong security for food, for oil, uh, fuel, electricity, uh, medicine, and emission, uh, uh, manufacturers, employment. All of this will make a powerful nation, not only having an army. So for sure, Trump, he will be, he be better a choice for America. Okay. And do you think that if they allow him to be in office, uh, that he was going to be able to reverse what's happening in Ukraine and what's happening, what may happen in Taiwan, prevent it. He cannot. Uh, he cannot Israel. reverse anything. I mean, what's reverse? It's or, not or, or like stop it basically. Is what no, 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 no. Not, not reverse. It. No, no. He cannot stop anything. But let us say he can uh, put the pressure because if he say I'm not going to support you, Ukraine, no more with money, then the Ukrainian they have only the support of the European, and I think the European still will support. So I don't think that will impact very much because already the Americans are not really, they are not really giving too much support. Uh, even in the news, they keep talking about uh, how big the support is. Uh, but in reality, uh, uh, Ukrainian right now, they are, they knew, they are preparing themselves that the coming election 
most likely uh, Biden is not going to be in the office. This is why uh, the Ukrainian, they refuse even to withdraw, uh, like uh, the uh, big general in the army, he wanted to withdraw uh, draft 500,000 fighters. They, they refuse because they want the economy to keep surviving because they are preparing themselves for what's coming. There's a few countries that will keep supporting them, regardless of America, because European countries are afraid of Russia. If Ukraine is conquered, then they will be next. So the support from Europe is going to keep coming, and I'm sure of that, but the support from America might not. But that will not make a big difference because I believe they are preparing themselves. In the top of that, now we see in the news, a Ukrainian, a Ukrainian they will not be keep depending on the, on the on the American weapon or European weapon. They are making their own. So now they are in control of the Black Sea. And now Putin himself, like, you know, if you if you watch the interview with uh, uh, Carson, uh, Putin, he says, I'm willing to negotiate, you know, he, he will never say that if he is a strong. He is saying that because simply things is messed up for Russia. We just saw sorry, sorry, what, what is what is it he said? He, he, he is willing to negotiate. The Ukrainian are not wow. willing to negotiate. And this is true. The Ukrainian, they will not negotiate. Why do we negotiate? You take our land. To give us our land. So he wants them to negotiate and he, he want to keep the land. That is not fair. So the one who will negotiate, obviously, is the one who is losing ground. Even maybe he is gaining ground. Maybe in the ground, he is gaining ground. But he is losing ground because the cost of the war, it became unbearable for him. Like just a few days ago, the Ukrainian, they hit a massive ship. You know, the Russian took them 10 years to build it. They lost it in five minutes. And they sent six or seven drones in the sea, in the Black Sea, all the way to Crimea. So now the, the, the Ukrainian are not the same as two years ago. They are building their own weapon. They have their own guns machines. They have their own drones. They are not buying drones no more from Turkey. In fact, the Turkish now, they are using the Ukrainian engine from the beginning, actually, uh, uh, to make a drone. So the U Ukraine tomorrow is going to be a scary army. And we don't know even if the Ukrainian right now, they are preparing themselves. And we don't know if already they have nukes. Because remember, Ukraine have many nuclear facility long time ago, not now. And they used to have nukes. So they can make nukes, nukes and I, I believe, I think, and this is the right thing to do, if they are smart, they should have already some. So Ukraine is going to suffer for sure because, you know, they are not in the same size of Russia. They don't have the same population. Uh, you know, they are not really prepared for such a war. The Russian, they have a massive warehouses of etc. But later we found out how they are destroying their 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 tanks, how they are hunting them, how they are even using now tanks from from the from 50 years ago. The Russian, they are using uh, T60 something. I forgot the number, and the T72. I mean, those are old old tanks. They use them only because they are out of tanks. So the Russian now they are really struggling. Putin, obviously, he made a big mistake. He thought it's going to be two days, you know, picnic to Ukraine. And even the American, obviously, they thought the same. The American, they were stupid. All the general of, uh, of USA, I saw many interviews. They said Ukraine will collapse in 48 hours maximum. 48 hours. What happened is the opposite. You know, the Ukrainian right now, they are hitting all the way to Moscow. So things, the game is changing. And now Putin, he noticed that uh, Russian, they will be, they will start complaining badly. Already we have a lot of people, they are complaining badly about this war. Their kids, they, they went to war, they never came back. And now when they see the bombs are coming in, 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 the, in the city of Moscow or Pittsburgh, um, that is different from saying, I am attacking, we have war in Ukraine. The war now is not in Ukraine no more. The war now is in Russia. And every day, there is a new attack in, uh, uh, you know, uh, manufacture or uh, uh, fuel stations or etc. by the Ukrainian. So Putin, he have to compromise because he is getting weaker. It's not the opposite. Even though it's supposed to be Ukraine is going to be compromising. But if the Ukrainian, they are able to sponsor themselves, I don't think that will, will, will benefit anybody. Uh, and you know, sadly, 
uh, uh, Putin, he is so proud of himself. He don't want to say he made a mistake. Uh, he don't want to admit that it was a stupid decision. And because of that, you know, he's proud. And now he have election too, you know, which is, you know, funny election. Uh, because he's the kind who is a dictator and dictator will never say, I made a bad decision. How he can explain himself coming back as a president if he agree that he made a bad decision. So he will keep in, in war until things maybe go out of hand. And we will not know what, we, what will happen next. But I don't think Ukrainian will compromise so easy. And at the same time, I say, and this is my statement, if the Ukrainian lose the war, still they are victorious. Why? Because they fought the most powerful nation in the earth after America. Alone. Regardless of the weapon they send them, but still they are the one who's fighting alone. And that is that by itself is a victory. And last summer they were able, not this summer, the summer before, they were able to take a, a big chunk of land back. So, uh, you know, I, uh, uh, I really have a lot of respect for those Ukrainian and I feel so much sorry for the Russian soldiers getting killed because this is a something evil. And uh, for me, uh, the war from the first day is nothing but evil and there is no reason for it. Russia is the biggest country in the earth. They have borders with every single country, massive country, China, Japan, America. Yeah, they have borders with us in America. So if they are afraid about being next to the NATO, well, they are in the border of America. They are literally in the border. From, we have one mile between us and them. Just one mile. So what NATO is talking about? And now after all of this, Finland and other countries, Sweden, they joined the NATO. So did he succeed? No, he failed massively. If the point was to stop Ukraine from joining the NATO, he failed. And he will not be able to make them, you know, go down to their knee. Okay. I hope I answer you. Yeah, I have a, a disagreement, though, with something you just said, but maybe I'm misunderstanding some things or missing information. Uh, but you mentioned U.S., would Donald Trump would take off pressure from Ukraine so they stop fighting? Uh, that, is that correct? Or well, or, or, you know, Trump is a businessman. He don't care really for Ukraine. Yeah. He don't care if Ukraine win or lose. He's a businessman, you know, and uh, it's very well known that Trump, uh, he's not a, let us say, he's not the person who have a friends. He have no friends. Okay. That's why okay. He, he, he said just a few days ago that uh, when he was speaking to a leader in the NATO, he told him, if you don't pay, I will encourage Russia to attack you. He said that. So this guy, he's a businessman. He don't care really for uh, trust and loyalty. And uh, uh, his ethic is bad too, because this is this is about ethic. His ethic is bad. And this such a person, uh, you cannot trust him to be a friend. Because if you don't pay him, he will, he will dump you. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. And, and, and uh, just the issue I have is you said Europe would always continue support. For Ukraine. Uh, one thing I just don't understand is there's a pipeline that's running through Ukraine, right, to connect Russia to Europe to supply oil yeah. to Europe. Yeah. And I heard like last year, Germans had to heat their houses with trees they were cutting from their backyards mm -hmm. and parks. Mm -hmm. uh, and um, they, they, they really needed, you know, oil, like gas was super expensive. Restaurants are closing because mm -hmm. their power was very expensive because okay. Russia had cut gas. So wouldn't actually, if Europe would allow gas, would tell Ukraine to allow gas to flow from Russia to... Why well, I want to uh, tell Ukraine Europe, to do or not to Europe? do? No, no, listen. This is not about helping Europe. The European, they should be smarter. Why they stop using a nuclear facility for fuel and uh, electricity? They were stupid. Now they start building again. So by the time the war is open, now they should have what is ready. Now they have, you know, and, okay. they, are, and they are building a nuclear facility. Look, uh, in Ukraine right now, in Ukraine, every house have electricity. But they are the one who has have war. So why the stupid German? They were not preparing themselves to support themselves if somebody cut their oil from them. Is it possible that somebody will do or an accident happen and this gas line stop? Is it possible that one day Putin himself, he got upset from something and he stopped the line? So oh, yeah. they should be smarter, and but they are not. The Ukraine right now, they have facility, they have nukes. They have nuclear facility and they have and actually the cheapest uh, fuel is or uh, let us say energy is the electric energy in ukraine okay. and every house have electricity you know 
If you go right now and check, you will ask any Ukrainian. He will say, do you have uh, uh, electricity at home? He will say, yes, it's war. Uh, but you just mentioned that uh, Germany, they, they start using uh, wood, you know. It doesn't make sense. They don't have war, but they are using wood. And this is Germany. Why? Because the stupid climate to change propaganda yeah they forced okay. them to stop their you know their their uh, nuclear facility which is the cheapest way to make a fuel and energy to make energy and they decide to stop it and now we, all of europe is going back to that so we're seeing a big shift in the climate change policies then there is no climate change this is a joke what's climate change climate change I, no no but w w what i'm saying is we're seeing a shift in kind of the belief it, of it's not about the belief change. it's about necessity we're, we're i don't, I don't know about the belief but about necessity as you see they yeah. will they will die from cold so what we would do we have no choice except either buying uh, gas and oil from the arab or we have our own nuclear and we can have very cheap electricity for sure the cheap electricity will win you know okay because simply, okay. because actually, even for climate change, the nuke uh, facility is way better because it, there's no carbon, there's nothing, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, as long as it's secure and safe, then nothing to worry about. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. <clears throat> Uh, and this is another mistake when you are a person who trusts your heat on the neighbor. <laughs> that is another stupid mistake. And when you have the technology to build your nuclear facility, so you will have unlimited supply of energy and power and electricity. Why you don't do it? Why, why, why you are being stupid? You know, and Germany is a very high tech country. It's not like this is not Somalia. So this is what happened when the liberals take over. They want to shut down everything. They want to shut down a nuclear facility. They want to shut down fuel. They want to shut down everything. And the excuse is the climate change. But when they get cold, then they forget about the climate change. What they will do if there is no electricity and there is no power. Hmm? Yeah. Uh, All right. Any other question? Well, I hope we cover this issue and uh, I will try to go again about Trucker Carson speaking about Islamic countries are the nicest, <coughs> excuse me, and the safest country in the world. That is really hilarious from Trucker Carson to say. Uh... <coughs> CP, stop this. People need to learn not politics. <laughs> okay, who is asking you to stay? Take a hike. <laughs> stop, stop. You are hurting me. <laughs> uh, some people are really silly and stupid. <laughs> uh, so here, don't get married. Because I think when your wife, she asks you to go to bed with her, you say to her, stop. People need to learn, not sex. Is that what you do with your wife? Is that why you have no kids until now? Hmm. Okay, okay. <clears throat> All right. Uh, let's see here if we have any. Yeah, it looks like we are out of uh, callers. Uh, so, I don't know, you know, uh, uh, for me, I hope that people who listen today, they will change their mind about this idiot, Trucker Carson. And you should know that when you support Israel, you are supporting yourself, not Israel. Remember, the Bible says, I curse the one who curse them. I curse the one who curse them. You curse them, you will be cursed. And remember, Israel is not only a country of the Jews. Israel have a most important holy place for us as a land, as a Christians. 
So if the Jews is not there, who is going to be there? You know the answer. So you are not supporting Israel only. You are supporting yourself. And there is no way someone he is a Christian. Regardless of what you say, okay, the Jews, they speak bad about Jesus. Okay, no problem. Jesus, in his time, in his time, when he was on the cross, what Jesus said, forgive them, Father, they do not know what they are doing. What that is telling you, that the Messiah really loved them. I mean, they just put nails in his hands. They just put nails in his feet. This is the point, this is the time where you curse everybody. This is the time when you lose your mind and you start saying, I kill you, I destroy you, I curse you. What he said? Father, forgive them. They do not know what are they doing. That is a statement of love not a statement of curse otherwise jesus he can curse them and in fact the messiah when he said that he proved to us that he is absolutely truthful in everything he said because the hypocrite one the hypocrite the, the hypocrite one is the one who says to you forgive your enemy love your enemy blah 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 and then when when somebody touch his head or his skin he go crazy jesus he forgive them even in the cross And we knew why they hate them and what they want from them. And this is why we should not leave Israel alone. And the funny is, suppose they am an Arab and Trucker Carson is not. And I am asking you to support Israel. And I'm warning you about not supporting Israel. If they lose war, you are next to be slaughtered. This is the truth. It's about who is first. It bothered them to have a Jewish state in the Middle East. When they finish everybody there, who is going to be next? Not long time ago, the Mohammedan, they took all over Europe. Spain was controlled for hundreds of years. 800 years. Erdogan is taking our churches and converted them to mosque. Their holy war never never stopped and will never stop. It stopped only for the Western. The Western, they lost their mind. They didn't know what's coming to them. They are busy with the global warming. They don't know that the earth is boiling under their feet. And the terrorist is all over Europe. And sooner or later, there's a big civil war will happen inside Europe in England, in France, in every European country. It's just a matter of time. In the same time, we are not here to teach hatred against anyone, but we are just sharing the truth. Islam is a religion of violence, and they believe that they should fight everybody. Muhammad, he says, I've been commanded to kill all mankind until they say there's no God but Allah and there's no prophet but me. And then and only then I will stop and protect, they will be protected from my hands and their blood. When Jesus said, Father, why you have forsaken me well if you read the whole chapter you will know right away this is about the messiah the whole chapter is the is, a, is, a, is about the messiah <clears throat> so because we know what they believe then it's stupid of us to say oh you know what we should forget the past the future will be different the future as long they believe in a book is written 1400 years ago and this book asking to kill all non-Muslims, then it's only your foolishness to believe that they are going to forget about you. It's just a matter of time. And actually, they are there already. 
So what time we're talking about? And those people, they have no compromise when it's come to who to kill, who's not. Women, children, babies, burn them alive, rape them. We are, we are still, they are still living in the time where thousands of years ago, people used to do savage stuff. They never change. They never change. Thank you for all the time you have with me, and I hope you have uh, you have a good night. Uh, maybe tomorrow or the day after, I will go and I will speak about Tucker, Tucker Carlson praising evil countries, claiming that they are nicer than America, and we will examine if this is true or not. Shall we? We should really examine what those false those are false teachers by the way he don't claim to be a priest yes but he claimed that he can teach you about what is a better future for you so you can change your mind about you vote for who you go against who you choose who and who you support who you donate to who so he want to supposedly guide you for the right path in your life but in reality this man is very evil and I say to you, and I am from the Middle East, I will never stop supporting Israel, even though I don't agree with Netanyahu, even though I call him a scumbag, even though I blame him for everything happened because he is a stupid. He is the one who commanded the Shambit not to watch Hamas. He is the one who trusted a security camera in the border. He's an idiot. Him and the one before him and the one before him and the one before him and the one who signed peace agreement with the stupid Arafat. All of them, they are stupid. You signed peace agreement. Did you receive peace? You acknowledged him as a president. What you got from that? Nothing. Now they call him some president. Stupid idiot. You gave them land. Did they give you peace? Did they stop stabbing you? Attacking you? Can you find me one day in your calendar without a stabbing attack? So what this peace agreement did to you? You are stupid. This is what happened when you receive command from the American who want to make just accomplishment of politics. So when Trump, he signed a peace agreement between Emirat and Israel, do you really have peace? Here we go, they are bashing you. Emirat is the one who call for vote against Israel, the first one in the United Nations. Calling Israel is a war crime, the same as Erdogan. So you sign peace agreement, are you really at peace with them? They are not in peace with you. You are just an idiot. Trump, all what he cared for is an accomplishment of politician. I made this happen, but what he made is nothing. It's a piece of paper. They will never stop being at war with you. Just because it's not how you view the chosen people of God differently does not mean that you are right, CP. It's wrong. Oh, I don't know about the chosen people of God. Uh, what I know that you choose God before God, He chose you. Even though the Bible says, I, I chosen you before you chose me. But people of God is people who follow God. It doesn't matter if you are a Jew or not. This is why God himself he said I curse those who curse you but he was talking about people who follow God not about people who support homosexual festival so in Israel there's people who follow God and there's people they don't as simple as that there's hippie there's a you know there's all kind of madness those are not just chosen people of God Chosen people of God is those who follow God. You don't have a license for sin. You don't have a license to be evil. So in order to earn that title, well, you have to earn it. You are not born with it. 
the same as God, he, you know, he punished the Jews when they were, they went away from the truth. He punished them. He punished them many times. And that can happen to all of us, not only the Jews. Many countries, many empires went destroyed because they are not obedient to God. And that can happen to any nation. Uh, so we are here, we support Israel, not because every Israeli is that you know is is a is from the chosen people of God. No, but because this is their land, and we know that they hate them just because they are Jews. Even many of them, they are Jews by name. Like the festival when they attack the festival, who was in the festival? Many of them, they are you know homo and lesbian and hippies, you know music festival peace festival. Still, they want to kill them. And those are the ones who believe that they support, even those are the ones who carry the flag of Hamas. They carry the flag of Palestine. Those are the ones who say, free Palestine. Those stupid, those stupid, same stupid people, they are the ones who killed first. They don't care. They don't care if you support uh, Palestine, you don't support Palestine. They will kill you. You are a Jew. For them, you are a Jew. They don't care if you are red chicken, white chicken. They don't care. You are a Jew. It's like somebody saying KFC is a nice house. It's a it's, it's a chicken slaughterhouse. It doesn't matter for them. If they think of you as a chicken. They have to kill you. Wasn't their land before the British took Palestine and the Jewish terror org? That's false because the Jews are always exist. This is the land of the Jews. If I go right now and I ask, you know, let us go back to history. Is history about who was taken 40 years ago? You just said the bridge. That means this is the end of the bridge, if you if you think about it. At that time, the bridge, they took it from who? From the old man. So when the Palestinians, they were there. I'm going with you. Who is the, give me the last name of the king who was a king of the Palestinian, so-called Palestinian. Give me the name. I'm waiting. I said it was there before. Who was there before? Who was there before? If the Palestinians they were there before, tell me when. Those are Arab. Those are not Palestinians. This is number one. It was their land before you and made it to state. That's false. This is not their land. The first time the Muslim they entered that land. If you ask uh, uh, every single of those who call themselves Palestinian, are you a Palestinian or are an Arab? They say we are an Arab Palestinians. They are Arab. And Arab are not Palestinian. The first time the Arab they came in the 670 and after into that land. When Omar al-Khattab, he occupied Jerusalem, is the first day ever the Arab, they have a step in that land. So they themselves, they are occupation, and they are not from there. If we now go, if we now we go, and we ask ourselves, who is the one who built the temple? The Muslim, they call it Al-Aqsa. Who is the one who built that temple? Can you answer me? As long as the Palestinians were there, this is their land. Who is the one who built the temple? Hmm? The Palestinian? I'm waiting for your answer. Did you answer? I remember when I asked, uh, <laughs> when I asked the teacher, he said, Inshallah, we will take the uh, Baytul Maqdis again. I said, okay, sir, who is the one who built? Who is the one who built that temple? He said, uh, Suleiman. I said, is Suleiman is a Jew or a Hindu? <laughs> so they claim, they claim that this is their land, but the one who built everything in that land is the Jews. In their books.
Let me show you from their books. Uh, we're speaking about Suleiman, so we can laugh. I mean, even the stupid Muhammad he witnessed. Uh, by the way, Muhammad he never even mentioned the word Palestine. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> read this one with me. Palestine supporter. This is Muhammad himself. I hope you will not insult Muhammad and say he is a liar. Because he is, obviously, he died, you know, he's a Zionist. I mean, look what he just said. He said that the one who built this house is, uh, you know, is the Jews. I mean, obviously, he's a liar. Uh, Let us see. I'm trying to find the hadith. It says this one cannot be found. Let us see. Okay. Uh, where is the hadith about Suleiman? I mean, even their books, even the Quran, chapter 5, verse number 21, it says that the Holy Land is the promise for the Jews. In the Quran. Uh, let us see. I'm just trying to find the hadith, the authentic one, in English. I have it in Arabic here in front of me. Uh, but I'm trying to find... <clears throat> Let us see here. And even the Quran, by the way, speak about Suleiman building the temple. And he speak about uh, the genie. He command the genie and the genie, they build it for him. They build maharib and the statues in the temple. <clears throat> Let us see. Usually it doesn't take that long to find it, but I know why. I keep trying, it says, can't be found. Uh, let us see this one, if we can't find it. Allah, he said to, da to, to, to David, Build for me a house in the land, in the earth. Let us see this one. I mean, this website is horrible. You type something, it show you everything have, except what you are looking for. Okay, let us try something else. Hmm. Let us see this one here. I can show you the, the hadith in Arabic and use Google translation, but uh, I prefer to show you the English one. Huh, finally, 
Finally, thank you very much. Read with me carefully. Who was in that land first? The Arab or the Jews? When Suleiman, the son of David, the son of who? The son of David. Is Suleiman, the son of David, is an Arab? No. Is he a Jew? Yes. Who is Suleiman? Who is David? The king of the Jews. Who is Suleiman, his son? He became a king too. Uh, it says here, when he finished building Baytul Maqdis, which means even the, the, the most they are talking about is built by the Jews. It's in the front of you. Do you see it? Do you see it? So when a stupid idiot, he says to you that the Jews, they took the land from the Palestinian. First, those are not Palestinian. They are Arab. And there's no Palestinian. Palestinian is a nation is not even exist no more. This is this nation destroyed long time ago. There's no more Palestinian. Even the Muslim, they talk about the Palestinian, they are giants. Yasser Arafat, the first president of so-called Palestine, he is an Egyptian. And he is not even four foot tall. Do you see giants in Palestine, so-called Palestine? Where is the giant? So stop fooling yourself. And lying that those are the indigenous population, they are not the indigenous population, they are the Jews. The Jews own the land. Who cares? The word Palestine is not even a correct name. This is a name given by the Roman. You are ignorant. There's no country, it's called Palestine. When the Roman they took over the land, they wanted the Jews to stop calling their land that their land Israel. So they start calling it Palestine, not Palestine, Palestine. This is a Roman name. You are a donkey. And the name was given by the Romans so the Jews will stop using their own word for it. Ignorant people, stupid people, they say all kinds of stuff. What about you call me and prove what you are saying? I just gave you Muhammad himself, he is witnessing. Who is the one who built the temple? So this temple belonged to them. Hamas attacking Israel, Tawafan al-Aqsa, the flood of Aqsa. This is the Aqsa built by the Jews. What do they have to do with it? Stupid people, they lie, and they repeat the lie, and they believe the lie. Even the Quran, the book of the devil, says this is the land of the Jews. Can we find the word Palestine once in the Quran? No. <laughs> why? Allah never heard of it. And why Allah, he promised the Jews the Holy Land? It's in the front of you, here we go. I will type the word holy. I will not even type for anything. I will type in the front of you the word holy. Al Muqaddasa. Hmm. Watch me. That's it. I did not type anything. Chapter 5, verse number 21. Oh, my people, who's talking? Moses. Allah told him, Oh, my people. Look, and this is the Muslim translation. Oh, my people, enter the Holy Land between two brackets, Palestine, which Allah has assigned into you. Do you see it? Do you see it? Even the book of the devil Muhammad admitting that this is the land of the Jews. It's in the front of you.
This is the, this is the book of the devil, Muhammad himself. The book of Hamas. The book of Hamas, and not only that, when the Jews refused to kill every so-called Palestinian, Allah, he punished them. They said, we will not go and fight them. For in this land, there's a Jabbarin, there's giants there. Those Palestinians, they are the giants? Hamas? Yes, Arafat? Two men only, look at this story. There's only two men they want to go to war. The rest of the Jews, they don't want to go to war. And because they refused to go and kill so-called Palestinian, Allah, he punished them. And he forbade them from entering the Holy Land for 40 years. It's in front of you. Do you see it? Any complain about the book of Allah? Who is a, who is the one who support Israel, so support Hamas or Palestine, so-called Palestine? He can call me and spit at Allah because he's lying. This is the land of the Palestinian according to you. Who is going to do so? Who of you, hypocrite, who support so-called Palestine is willing to call me and spit at Allah book for he is asking the Jews to do genocide against the Palestinians. And because he ref they refused to do genocide, Allah, he punished them not to enter the land for 40 years. Who dare? You don't dare, you're a potato. And this guy, Sahih al-Bukhari, you keep changing your name, you come back with different name, you know, you know, I have to block you. You want to be stupid? Please, admin, anyone who start making too much noise or, or farting, just to block him. We don't have time for kids here. We are not here to entertain you. Anyone who supports so-called Palestine, he dare to call me? And you are willing to spit at Allah, who is asking to kill every single Palestinian? You don't dare. Because you are a hypocrite. Because you are a coward. Because you are double standard. So when Allah, he called for killing every single Palestinian, you bend your head. We don't bend our hand. We laugh at Allah. And we have the courage to expose him. Anyway. So today, we expose this uh, Tucker Carlson, the coward, who hate Israel, who hate the black people, who hate Christianity, and he claimed to be Christian. Be aware, my friends, of false teachers. Not everyone says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of my father. You shall know them by their fruits. Do we believe in that? We shall know them by their fruits. There is no way this person is a Christian. And he wants us to leave Israel alone. So they will gang on them 1.5 billion and they will slaughter every single Jew. This is an act of cowardice. Plus, we know that we are next. Plus, we knew that this is a land promised by God. And we have something very important in it. We have where Jesus was crucified. We have where the empty tomb of Jesus. This is a holy land for us. And we will not allow them to take it. Enough is enough. Garbage in, garbage out. Trucker Carson is just a coward. He say he is angry that America is policing everybody. But in the video, when he speak to Arab, he want America to police you, the, the Israeli. It's okay to police the Israeli. But it's not okay for Trucker Carson to police the world. 
As long we police the Jews and we oppress them, he is okay with it. It's time for us to be a police now. But he is the guy who is against police in the world. What's my business, he say. Why my kids will fight for you, he say. But now he have to send his kids, not his kids for sure, your kids, to fight in the side of Hamas to oppress the Jews. Why? Because, uh, you know, we have to police them. And he compared what happened between Hamas and Israel as two kids fighting and the father is America. Is that really what happened? Two kids are fighting. The whole Muslim world, they were dancing, shouting Allahu Akbar. Money coming from everywhere. His speeches around the world in Europe. In China, in Malaysia, in Indonesia, praising Allah for slaughtering the Jews. This is not about two kids, you idiot. Tucker Carson. You are a shame. You are a shame. And shame will be on the one who believe you and support the enemy of Israel. And as the Lord, he says, the one who cursed them, I will curse him. So go ahead and curse them. And then you will be cursed. Thank you all for being here. May the Lord bless you. Until I see you soon again. God is good. So is Jesus. Amen. See ya.